Welcome to uh, episode two, I suppose, of our Aero Coffee Breaks. I do want to remind everyone how we're launching this in the new 2022 version. Um, we've kind of consolidated everything under a single HyperWorks icon, right? So we used to have HyperWorks, you know, and HyperView and HyperMesh and Hyper, all this stuff was just listed out. But now we have a single icon and clicking on this icon will bring up, uh, we're calling it the launcher. Uh, this will allow you to kind of pick what we call your client, whether you want to do HyperMesh for pre-processing, HyperView, uh, as well as your profile, and then post sessions, you know, past models and those different types of things. If you think this is annoying, don't show this again, but if you like it, yeah, it's all right. We'll go ahead and create this session. Yeah. Um, so once again, I am working in, in 22, and today's uh, topic is going to be mid-surfacing which I know is probably still a good amount of, of everyone's job in aerospace, right? Is the ability to take a solid part from your designer. Hopefully it's closed. Hopefully it's been cleaned up. Um, last, yesterday we talked about, uh, not yesterday, last, uh, last session we talked about some of the cleanup stuff that we can do. Um, but really uh, what, what would probably be, be of most interest to, uh, to people is, um, you know, bringing in the mid-surfacing, and then obviously the mid-surface might have some cleanup operations as well. So there's no guarantee that the, the mid-surface comes in perfectly. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and open a, uh, a new HyperMesh model. Got one that's well-suited for some of this type of stuff. All right. Um, once again, when any model comes in, you always want to just rotate it to make sure that the, the product that you're working in is live. Uh, so move it around. Okay. All of the, the controls are a little new, especially if you're considering classic. Um, and then I'd like to show everything in my model. So I'm just going to right click and, and say show my model. All right. So uh, we call this our door surround. This is kind of a skin stiffened panel type of structure. Works pretty well for aerospace. Uh, type applications. Um, so I'll kind of jump between this model. I have a few, you know, generic arrow models, but um, we look at this. Um, there is some geometry cleanup that has to be done. Well, we can kind of uh, look at that as well, but really what we want to talk about today is being able to mid-surface this, right? So um, we do have our, our mid-surface button here. Um, a lot of these uh, workflows are, are the same underlying engine, the same algorithm that we've always had within HyperWorks. Um, it's just in a fancier new interface, right? So it just looks a lot prettier. Okay. So when I enter this mid-surface tool, um, it's going to ask me to select some solids, right? And that's, that's perfectly fine. So I'm going to start easy, right? Let's just, I'm just going to do these one at a time as well. There's no reason that you have to do this one at a time, but, you know, for the sake of, uh, just demonstration, let's look at one of these, um, little hat members over here. Uh, so I can select it and I have an option to either click mid surface or if you're, you know, if it just is so painful to move your mouse, those a thousand pixels up to mid surface, you also see that your uh, little cursor has a check mark on it too. So if this isn't, isn't peak, uh, peak laziness, I don't know what is if we just can't move our mouse to accept a button. So um, obviously, very straightforward mid-surface, right? This is just going to be an offset. I can kind of zoom in here and see uh, the original solid is in this green. So once again, we're going to take care of a lot of the coloring and the topology stuff for you in the background as you enter this tool. Put it in transparent mode, all different types of things. Uh, so as long as you don't override these little controls down at the bottom, uh, there's a really good chance that you know your model is going to be what you need it to look like. Okay. And then there's our mid-surface kind of just floating off in the middle. All right, there's an easy, easy one, right? That's just an offset. If we had a trouble with that, that's only going to make the rest of our life worse. Okay. Um, I see this little intercostal over here. Grab this one too. Once again, I saw that my, my mouse had a little check mark after I selected the solid part. Um, and I see my mid-surface here. Okay, so easy peasy. Let's go and look at something a little more difficult. What about this kind of larger frame section, right? And this, I, I didn't go in and do any defeaturing, and I would encourage you to try to not do defeaturing because there's a very good chance that, uh, depending on the complexity of your model, uh, we'll be able to figure out the mid-surface regardless of whether you defeature it or not. And there's a good chance if you do defeature it, um, you're going to end up having to do a lot more geometry cleanup. So 
again, it's going to be one of those things where I'm going to propose this this light 80 20 rule, right? Where we can get 80% of the answer with 20% of the effort, um, maybe even 90% of the answer with 10% of the effort. Um, so I'm not going to defeature this. Uh, I'm going to select this uh, kind of big beam here and hit mid surface. Not going to be as straightforward as these other ones. It's obviously got T's and intersections and all different types of, of things here. Um, so it's going to take probably about two or three s more seconds. There it is. And um, if we kind of scroll in and take a look at this, um, it looks OK. It's not in the mid everywhere, right? We can kind of see it's a little off. Um, so I don't know how particular people are about their mid surfaces, but um, I'm going to go in and do some cleanup on this one. So. I'm going to I'm going to pretend to be very angry about this. Uh, OK, so uh, with that being said, I'm going to kind of escape out of my my mid surface tool. I'm just going to hit escape on my keyboard um, and I want to do some some kind of looking at this. OK, uh, so right now I want to um, maybe hide hide my solids and only isolate my surfaces. Right. So I want to uh, go to my solid selector. I should be able to hit. Um, H on my keyboard or right click and hit hide. And it's just going to hide all the solids. Um, there's some all sorts of other stuffs in here. I might want to hide points as well. Points, right click, hide. Oops, control Z. Uh, maybe don't hide the points. Okay, so uh, I want to look at this. Um, so some of my other surfaces are still here. That's, that's fine. Um, but I was starting to see some issues with this mid surface, right? So not all was not well uh, with this this mid surface. So um, <clears throat> what I'm going to do is I'm going to come back to this stitch tool that I talked about in the previous episode. So the stitch tool is going to be able to do quite a lot of things. Okay. Um, so firstly, entering the stitch tool will change the coloring mode of my uh, um, of my surfaces here, All right? So I see these topology lines, the red, the green, and the yellow. Um, and, uh, you know, I'll, I'll turn on the solid in a second, but there's things that I don't I don't need the solid for, right? So as I kind of am looking around, I see these, these free edges that probably shouldn't be free, right? There's no indication to me why they're free. It's just that there's probably just some kind of minuscule gap in which these need to be kind of stitched together. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, just kind of come. Usually, what I like to do is like I like to box select. Remember, I think I, I showed this last time where it's where I'm going to be very very nonchalant about grabbing things and stitching them together uh, with the fact that my you know that these are just really small gaps, right? That can probably be whisked away with a very um, kind of global process, right? So what I see now is that red edge that wasn't stitched together. Um, you know, these lines were laid, laid within the tolerance. It got stitched together. I'm not super thrilled about this little gap here. So remember that the stitch tool also incorporates the point replace option. So I can take one point and drag it to another point in order to close that gap. So I might take this point and drag it to that point to say close that gap. Because if I didn't do that, the resulting mesh that comes out of this is going to be uh, less than perfect. It's just going to have that weird little joggle in it, and we don't want that. Okay. Uh, looking kind of in other places, I, I see similar things. So this could be something that the stitch tool can probably do, but I like to just do all of the options here. I can grab a line and drag it to that other line. Um, once again, here, uh, kind of point or line replaces the best option there. Okay. And just kind of looking at this, everything else looks okay. I'm not going to fix all of this, but uh, let's go ahead and look at this little part because this looks poor, right, to say the least. So um, what I want to do is I want to bring in my old, my beam, right? Um, I believe it was was this guy. Okay, so this beam open from my my German colleagues. Um, so you can kind of see that there was that something was going on with the geometry here. We didn't perfectly capture this, right? So this kind of this cap, uh, we, we need to, you know, essentially do something here in order to capture this correctly. Okay. Um, and in no way is this going to be the definitive guide for um, 
mid-surfacing. But I'm going to show you a few things that I like to do. Um, and these things are a lot easier to do now that we have uh, a little more interactive capability with some of these, um, these tools. Okay, So uh, the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of do some manual cleanup, right? So um, this is merely an introduction to some of the the mid-surfacing that we can do. But um, let's kind of kind of clean this up. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to split. I have this interactive split tool. And all I'm going to do is just kind of split this off. So these are now two separate surfaces. And the snaps are here to kind of help make my life a little easier. Um, I'm even going to come in, snap to that, and snap there, perpendicular. Okay. Um, so maybe what you're kind of seeing here is I'm going to try to give this part a little bit of a haircut. right? So because um, I'm thinking to myself, if I can have a nice kind of square rectangular region, I can probably just do a little patching, right? So I'm going to select these two new surfaces that I made uh, for purely made them for the, the sake of deleting them, right? So I'm going to delete on my keyboard that surface and delete on my keyboard that surface, right? So I have a much more mm, square patch to work with. And speaking of patch, that sounds like a great tool to use. Okay. So under the surfaces create, we do have this ability to create a patch, right? Uh, the patch tool works in a, a few ways. I can take a line and drag it to another line. Uh, this kind of does some estimation. It doesn't necessarily going to do a complete gap fill, but uh, you can kind of see that maybe I'd run this patch this way, and I could fill in another patch. Uh, but this is going to be a planar patch, so I'm going to actually hit Control Z. I don't want to do that. I could uh, select these bounding lines of my patch. And once again, I see my little check mark on my icon. And that's going to kind of more follow the line, that kind of back line a little better instead of just being a linear patch. Okay. I'm going to actually uh, control, well, yeah. I, I'm, I'm probably going to be okay with this. There's a few other options that we can do, um, but, you know. We have to remember, a mid-surface is already approximation of the solid, and then the mesh is going to be an approximation of that. So um, you do want this to be as close as possible, but you know the, the amount of time that you spend trying to get this perfectly uh, accurate is going to, you know, there's going to be some time savings and cost uh, associated with that. Okay. And then maybe I'll do a similar thing here, but maybe I'll just see how this patch tool works um, without having to go and trim that up. So uh, that patch tool works pretty fine. Um, but just be aware that these lines are topological lines. When we mesh this, they're going to be uh, mesh is going to be seeded to that. Okay. All right. So this this mid surfacing that I've kind of just proposed to you now is this mix between an, an automated thing of saying let's go to the mid surface, you know, let's just select a couple solids, see what the the mid surface gives us, right? Um, and if it gives us something that's pretty close, okay there are options that we can do in order to fix that, right? And I'm not saying that these manual options are going to be the best for, er for every situation. Um, and in fact, let's, let's kind of take this next little step of um, um, editing these plates, right? And this is a very common Patran Hyperworks thing to do. Uh, so once again, I'm gonna come back and show all of my models. So um, I should just be able to go right click, show all, there we go. Um, so I'm, you know, mid-surface of that one's done. Uh, I'm going to come and do mid-surface here. Something else that I'll point out that's always really rubbed me the wrong way is that all of these mid-surfaces that I made were put into their own, were put into the same component, excuse me. Um, so there wasn't really a, a great way of organizing all of these surfaces. Um, so what I'm going to do from, from henceforth is change the destination where this goes, right? So that's, this is probably something I would always recommend you to do. Um, and usually, usually what I like to do is I like to have each mid-surface that was originated from a particular part to be its own particular part that's just named after the part. <laughs> I know I said part a lot of times. So um, so what I'm going to choose is this original name dot and a number. Um, and what this is going to do is, so if I come and say I want to pick this this solid, okay, uh, this solid um, is its own component, and when I take this mid surface, it's going to give me a a new, uh, you know, a new kind of 
um, mid surface here, right? So um, that's kind of the the best way to do this, and, and that's how I like to do this, just from an organization standpoint. Okay, okay. Uh, let's kind of review. So this mid surface actually looks pretty decent, um, but a very common workflow in mid surfacing is is to actually go in maybe a little deeper into the algorithm and look at the plates that the preprocessor determined were going to be used for your part, right? Um, yeah, this one's pretty fine. Let's do something that's that's not fine because I'm not afraid to do something that's going to not work very well. Uh, I need to first Boolean. So there's, there's this big kind of uh, beam that goes this way. I just want to Boolean it together. It was split into two for... I don't know why it was split into two, but we'll just combine it into a single solid. So I know that the mid surface in this is is very bad. So, and I'm and I'll show you bad 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 stuff any day of the week. Um, all right. So I have this uh, this solid here, and I want to uh, say mid surface it. <clears throat> all right. Uh, mid surface this should put it in its own component as well so it should be nice and easy to find and organize uh, the mid surface here is quite bad and so what a, what kind of reviewing the plates is going to do is you have the ability to go in and say well you know you did it you did an okay job hyperworks uh, of finding these mid surfaces and plates uh, but let me let me propose a new strategy for you All right so I can come and edit these plates um, so these plates are going to show by type. So this offset planes and sweeps are the three types of plates that we have. And uh, when we're in this kind of this edit plates icon, we have some little options over here that show you some nice things. Uh, this shows you the type, which is fine. And for most of these, uh, the type is going to be perfectly, perfectly uh, acceptable, right? Um, Except I say that, and and really, what we probably want this base plate to be, this web that goes across here, is probably planar. Um, so in order to change the type, you can you can click on the the plate itself. You see it gets highlighted, and then we have a micro dialog in which you can uh, update that plate type, right? So if I did want that plate type to just be planar, to just completely, you know, uh, uh, this is lies within the same plane. Right, that would be perfectly fine. Although this one doesn't, you kind of see it's a little bent. But um, just change that, and uh, I can hit update mid surface. I'm not going to do that yet because I want to look at some other things. Uh, the second thing that might be important to you, well, so these are the types, but they don't necessarily show you kind of what plates they are, the connectivity of these plates, right? So um, what we can actually do is we can color by the plate, so you can see how they get. Um, kind of connected here, okay? And actually a great example is back here um, on this, the original beam that we did. So you can see that all of these colors denote a different plate. And if you're all, if you're ever having trouble with plates connecting, right? So maybe you, you do all of this uh, mid-surfacing, but every time you mid-surface, there's always just a bunch of little gaps in between every single surface that you have, right? So um, that could just be because the plate is discontinuous, okay? Which means that this maroon plate here and this ooh, uh, brownish to the left of it, uh, these are two separate plates. Um, if I wanted to, say, kind of combine these, I could select both of the plates and just once again change their type again. And now we're gonna see that they're the same color, right? So this is now a single plate because I've combined them and I've defined them as the same type of plate. Um, you know, is this the, the, the most intuitive, best workflow in the world? Eh, probably not. We're working on it, but this is really graphical and it does uh, expose all the options that we had you know, previously as far as being able to edit these plates. So if I want this kind of triangle region, instead of being two separate plates to be a single sweep plate, I can just go and select both of the plates and update. Uh, but just keep in mind, this is where um, you can change the coloring and then the surface, the selection um, by plates. Okay. And, you know, if you will indulge me for just a little bit longer, uh, I do have this little... Um, beam in here that actually needs a little bit of help. Um, but it actually does a really good job of showing this plate edit, and that's what I want to 
uh, finally do. So I need to do some stitching to this, I think. So this whole thing is just a little, that's a little wonky. It's got some, some issues. Uh, it needs some gaps to be closed. It's missing some surfaces. Close that gap, close that gap. And then I'll do my little patch tool. Should be able to hit find. Oh yeah, look, it finds these and it wants to, it already wants to patch them for me. How nice. Okay, so uh, this should now be a closed surface. So I should be able to create a solid out of it. Just an extraneous step. Uh, and let me mid-surface this. Well, the reason that I'm doing this is because this one has a very obvious um, updating the plates uh, is very, very beneficial to this part because it does have this uh, little joggle in one of the plates. Okay, so it does have this little joggle down here for one of these stiffeners um, that's not really captured by the mid-surface. Okay, so by editing the plates, you know, uh, <clears throat> So this plate type really needs to be um, a sweep instead of planar, right? And so that's really its big issue. Um, so now when I go and let's see if we color by type. So now this is blue for a sweep plate instead of a planar plate. If I go update mid surface, uh, we should be able to see this little joggle captured now um, when the mid surface updates. Right now, this is rerunning the entire mid-surface. Uh, we are working on a, a uh, partial mid-surface update, but we don't quite have that right now. So by updating this plate from planar, you saw it was just planar originally, to the sweep type, now you see that we more accurately capture that, that mid-surface right there in the middle. Okay. And kind of exit out of this, okay? So that's going to be our, our real quick crash course into mid-surfacing. So I'm going to, going to kind of leave you with two options. One is, you know, use the default mid-surfacing preferences. Don't worry about the plates. Don't worry about that. Um, use some of the new geometry editing creation tools. I didn't even show you, like, uh, the copy and paste and move. I think that's a pretty straightforward workflow of being able to take a surface, copy, paste it and then uh, move it into a mid-surface and then stitch it all back together. Um, so you have that kind of manual option, or you also do have the, the kind of the legacy of this editing plates. Um, I have to say for, for, for new users, this might be a little odd and clunky to use, but um, it is there. Okay. Uh, so with that, I hope, I hope everyone is doing well. Um, next week, I believe we'll talk meshing and assigning thickness to these mid surfaces, because that's the next step. Um, but until then, uh, feel free to reach out to our support or myself, and I'd be happy to help.